Hi, I'm Dr. T. I'm a researcher, neurologist, and metabolic specialist who studies and cares for people living with mitochondrial disease. This is Louise. She's a mito patient of mine. Today, we are exploring the important connection between mitochondria, exercise, and health. In my lab, we believe that exercise is medicine. As you know, we all need energy to survive. When mitochondria are functioning properly, they produce the essential energy our muscles and organs need so we can think, move, and live our lives. We all have trillions of mitochondria. They are present in almost every cell of our bodies. We tend to have more mitochondria in cells that require a lot of energy like our brains, hearts, and muscles. Mitochondrial disease occurs when the function and or abundance of these critical energy producing structures decreases. I'm often really tired after exertion. Some days, even a short walk exhausts me. My muscles feel weak, my legs cramp, I have trouble with my balance, and it's difficult to concentrate. Is exercise good for me and others living with Mito? Yes, exercise is good for everyone, especially Mito patients. It supports brain health, strengthens muscles, protects joints, helps regulate blood pressure and weight, reduces anxiety and depression, and increases the production of mitochondria. When you have more healthy mitochondria, you have more energy for living your best life. There are actually two types of exercise that can benefit your mitochondrial and overall health. These are strength or resistance training and endurance training. Strength training involves contracting muscles against resistance. That resistance can be your own weight or tools like dumbbells, rubber tubing, or items from around the house. The goal of strength training, which involves doing a low number of high intensity repetitions, is to increase the power and size of muscle fibers, stimulate production of mitochondria, and decrease mitochondrial mutations. Endurance exercise, also known as aerobic exercise, usually involves many low intensity repetitions that make your heart and lungs work harder. Aerobic exercise aims to improve the ability of the heart and lungs to deliver oxygen and nutrients. It also improves muscle stamina by increasing blood flow and mitochondria production. Walking, running, swimming, biking, and jumping rope are examples of endurance exercises. Studies of endurance training in mitochondrial patients show an increase in the number of mitochondria in muscle cells. This is called biogenesis. An increase in the body's ability to use oxygen during exercise. A decrease in the production of lactate, a metabolic waste product that forms when mitochondria are not working properly and improved quality of life. This makes me want to exercise, Dr. T. But how much exercise should I do? The ultimate goal for everyone should be to combine resistance and endurance training at a moderate to vigorous rate for about 30 minutes a day, at least five times a week. It's usually important for people with mito to begin slowly and at levels of intensity and duration that are tolerable for them. Then gradually increase those levels as your strength and endurance improve. And remember, exercise doesn't have to be boring or feel like work. We all do lots of physical activities in our daily lives, like walking, cleaning, taking the stairs, gardening, or dancing. Exercise can and should be fun. Is it okay for me to do the same exercises as people who don't have mitochondrial disease? There are some things people living with mito need to be mindful of. For example, before starting a new exercise program, patients with mito should undergo cardiac screening to check their heart health. Once cleared, mito patients 
need to work with their health teams to create programs that gradually build from low intensity exercises for short periods of time to higher intensity exercises for longer periods of time. Sometimes when I've done too much, I don't have the energy or strength to do everyday tasks, never mind exercise. This severe fatigue also happens when I get sick. Should I just push through and keep exercising? It's very important to listen to your body. If you have a mito episode, take the time to rest and recover. If you exercise too much too soon, you may actually damage your muscles or kidneys or experience nausea, vomiting, vision, and hearing loss. When you're able, start moving again, but slowly and carefully. You may not be able to exercise at the same level at first, but be diligent and patient. With time, you can rebuild your strength. Thanks very much, Dr. T. Now I understand why you say that exercise is medicine. I can honestly say that when I exercise, I do feel better. After speaking with you, I'm going to make sure I try my best to exercise at least 30 minutes a day, incorporate both resistance and endurance training, take a break if I am tired or sick, but get back on track as soon as I can, and have fun when I exercise. Mito Canada thanks Dr. Mark Tarnopolsky for sharing his expert opinion with us so we could develop the content of this animation. We are also thankful to Louise Gibson, creator of Mito Canada's Walk and Roll for Mito, an inspiring annual event that provided further funding for this animation and multiple Mito research initiatives.